that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him and he'll do what? He'll direct your path. And so at the end of the day, if you acknowledge God, if you acknowledge his sovereignty in your life, if you acknowledge that he knows the plans he has for you, he will direct your path. He will put you in his will. And see, every Christian ought to know that. Me, myself, I've struggled with this. I remember when I was in college, one of the things that I struggled with the most it was, was that I always wanted to worry about what God was going to do in my life. I had my own idea of what I wanted to do, but I kept thinking, what is it that God wants to do in my life? Has anybody ever struggled with that every once in a while? Just trying to figure out what is it that God wants for me to do in my life. Everyone at some time or another has struggled with trying to figure out what is God's will for my life? What is God trying to do through the situations that I go through? And so I'm sure at the, end of the, at the end of the day, many of us have struggled to, again, understand what is God's will and figuring out what does God want. However, at the end of the day, do we really know what God wants for our life? Do we really know? How do we know that what we're doing today is what God wants us to do? How do we know that the plans that we make are actually the plans that God would have us to do? I think everyone has asked that question at some point in their lives, and we struggle with this. We struggle with what I like to call the myths. Say the myths. You know, there's myths. There's things that we look at that we think about when it comes to God's will for our life, and you can go to the next slide. There's things that we struggle with, and so here's a myth that I don't want you to get caught up into when it comes to God's will for your life. The first myth is that life is this big road map, that, that, that God's going to give you this road map. How many of you want the road map? Some of us want the road map. We want to know what's going to happen and, and how, how it's going to turn out. But how many of you know that if God gave you the road map, you probably wouldn't get on that journey? If God told you what you was going to go through to get to where you are today, I tell you right now, I would have quit a long time ago. So a lot of us think that, that being in God's will is about having the roadmap. But, but, roadmap. but one of the things you need to look at is an example in the, in the Bible. How many of you know about the children of Israel in the Old Testament? They didn't have a road map. The Bible said that they had a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And so what was going on is they were just, God was covering them along the journey. And see, that's what God's will is about. It's not just about knowing the road map. It's not about knowing what's ahead. It's just about knowing if you can stay in his will, if you can stay under his covering, he will direct your what? Your path. He'll illuminate what's in front of you. He may not show you what's, what's ahead, but he'll take care of you every step of the way and every step that you go. And so we can't fall into the myth that there's going to be this road map and he's going to show us the way and all that in that kind of a way. At the end of the day, we just got to keep on stepping. And the best way to do it is to have a what? A relationship. And so when you have a relationship, a relationship is what? It's ongoing. It's something that you have constantly. And when you have that constant relationship with God, that's how you stay in his will. Because when you're in a relationship with somebody, you actually get to know them better. And they get to know you better. And they guide you and you guide with them and you walk with them. So the first myth that I want you to understand about being in the will of God is not about finding the road map. Now, the second myth that I want you to never get caught into is what we call uh, the miserable myth. Say miserable. You know, some folk think that being a Christian is a miserable thing. We think if things are bad, oh, the Lord is working it out for me. You know, we, we, we think that, 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 that uh, being in God's will is about being in misery, being caught up in some, in some bad things. But I want to tell you tonight that God loves you. I want to tell you tonight that God wants to bless you, that God wants to see good things happen in your life. It's not just about gloom and doom. God wants to bless you and excel you. And, and if, don't the Bible say that God loves you? He loves us in, in a certain kind of way. So that doesn't mean that being in his will is about being in misery. God wants you to have some happy times. He wants you to have some good times. He wants you to have some great moments. So it's not about being miserable. Also, being in God, God's will does not always, and I know some of my miracle workers are going to hate this, but it doesn't always happen through miracles. See, a lot of us want God to move through the earthquake. We want him to shake it up and then a car fall out the sky. 
Thank you, Lord. I got it now. You want an earthquake to happen and the ground separates and all of a sudden there's a pile of money sitting in a basket. But it don't always work like that. The Bible says this. The Bible says that God speaks through a small voice. See, a lot of times we're not in his will. We're not falling and, and getting in his will because at the end of the day, we too loud. We talking too much. We hearing too much of ourselves and not hearing enough of the Lord. That's why quiet time is so effective. That's why quiet time is so good because at the end of the day, that's the moment when you can hear his voice. That's the moment where he'll sink some things down in your spirit. It's the quiet time where God moves. It says he's, he moves in a small, still voice. And you can't hear a quiet voice unless you're quiet. If you're loud, you might miss it. So the third myth is that Jesus is just, that God is going to speak to us and put us in his will by some loudness, by, by, by the earthquake, the hurricane, or whatever else. Sometimes he does move in that way, but sometimes he says, just quiet down a bit and watch me work. So what does the Bible say about this? The Bible says that God speaks again with a still, small voice. And you'll find that this is Bible study night, Amen. So Proverbs 4.18, write that down. Don't forget about that. The still small voice in Proverbs 4.18, that's where you'll find that text. That's where you can sink that into your spirit. The Bible basically says this. Repeat after me. Say, the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines every brighter unto the perfect day. So what does that mean? That means this. That means first it's dark. Then it's gray at dawn. Then you see colors and shadows. And after a while, it's high noon. And that's when the light comes out. And that's where his wheel will be sitting right in your face. So it's a process. It's a journey. God's will is not just a destination to get to, but it's a journey that you want to be in every single day of your life. And see, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the process. The Bible says this also in Joel chapter 2, verse 25. The Bible says this, and I love this. This helps me out every time. The Bible says it's never too late for you to get in his will. Isn't it good to know that it's never too late? How many folk think they old? Just look at me and wink at me. It's never too late. No matter what age, what, no matter what stage you are, uh, there's a lesson that I teach at noon, and I do it every single year, and I talk about it's never too late. You got to keep on working and keep on moving. Folk want to retire. I tell you, when you retire, you need to just retire into something easier to do because, because no matter what age you are, if you are alive and kicking, there's something that you need to be doing. There's a will for your life. There's something that God wants you to do. God says this in the Bible. He says, I will restore you to the years that the swarming locusts have eaten. God will give you a fresh start to cover for the years that you messed up and wasted. Isn't it good to know when we waste some time, God can recover that time? That's the good thing about God. At the end of the day, no matter what we've been through, no matter what we did, at the end of the day, he can still put you back in his will. See, a prime example is this. I was studying missiles, and there's uh, when you look at the military and you look at missiles, uh, there's this uh, station where they call missile control. And so this was a scary thing that I read. And sometimes when you read on the Internet, you need to stop reading because sometimes it'll scare you to death. Because the truth is about missiles, and I learned this about the military. So they fire off missiles, right? But these missiles, they're very sophisticated. They have computers on the inside. What I found out is, and Billy, you were in the Air Force, so you know about this. I hope you weren't the one shooting these missiles. Is that, uh, is that when they fire these missiles, they actually reprogram every single time and start going in the wrong direction. And so at Mission Control, what they do is they're constantly reprogramming that missile to go in the right direction. So that missile continues all the time to, to where it's supposed to go, but actually at the end of the day, it actually shoots off and goes in the wrong direction and messes up, but the computer on the inside from mission control sends it back on the right course. Isn't that like life? We get off the path every once in a while, but God shoots us back where we need to go. We need to thank God that he's like mission control. When we step off the path, he brings us right back 
to where he wants us to be in his will. So that's the good thing. God says this at the end of the day. If you missed my plan for your life, just let me reprogram you right where you are. You can start over tonight. You can start over again and be reprogrammed. The Bible says that God's guidance, this is what I love, is promised to you. And see, if he made that promise, you can live with the satisfaction of knowing that he promised he'll guide you. He promised that he'll put you in the wheel. But all you have to do is do what? Acknowledge him and he'll do what? He'll direct your path. The Bible says this, we are his workmanship. Say workmanship. You can find that in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. So basically, God had a plan for you even before you were born. He had a will for you. He had something planned for your life. If nobody else planned something out for you, I want you to know that God did. If nobody else cared about what happens to you or what you do in your life, I want to tell you, God cares about you. The Bible also say, says that a, the, good, the steps of a good man, of a good woman are what? Ordered by the Lord. Psalms 37, 23, God orders your steps one at a time. Again, it's not about always trying to find that map of, of, of knowing what's ahead. You just got to walk with him and talk with him and let him lead you along the way. Think about that. The Bible says this in Psalms 23, 8. It says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Isn't it good to know that he's got his eye on you? Because he knows when you're going to step onto the wrong side. And, and how many of you know when you step onto the wrong side, you can get in some trouble? You know, I was at lunch with one of my buddies, and it was him and his wife, and he was popping off at the mouth, and he was embarrassing her a little bit. And all she had to do was give him an eye, and he changed his whole speech. <laughs> Oh, boy, he changed his tune. He was, he was saying something about them, and, and she gave him one look, and all of a sudden, his whole story changed. And see, that's how the Lord is. Sometimes he's just got to give us that eye. Sometimes he's got to just put us in that little situation and let us know, at the end of the day, you've got to straighten up and get back in my what? Back in my will. So how about this? You got to do this. There are some things that you've got to do that you've got to do. There's some things and this is just my main lesson tonight. There's some things that you've got to do to receive the direction that you need to again be in God's will. That's our lesson for tonight. It's just about being in God's will. If you're in God's will, there's some benefits. There's some things that will happen if you stay in God's will. First thing you've got to do for our note takers, you got to be willing to know God's will. You got to be willing to know God's will. You got to be willing to seek God's will. You got to be willing to know it. You got to really be, you got to really want to do it. You know, a lot of people say they want to do something and they don't really want to do that. You know, a lot of people ask you to do something and sometimes you got to look behind it and say, this is what they really want. You know, I was thinking about uh, my wife and I a few years back, we were doing some renovations to our house. And so uh, uh, we were attempting to hire someone that could help us design things and put things in the right place and make things look right. So, so what I did was I went on HGTV and I figured it out all by myself. And so I went on the internet, got me some pictures and said, I wanted to look like this. I want to do it like this. And so I gave it to the designer and she said, well, it looks like you don't need me. Because you think you got it all together. Sometimes that's how we are with God. We tell him what we want when at the end of the day we need to be figuring out what he wants for us. Paul said this in the Bible. Paul said in Acts. He said, what do you want me to do? And see, that's how we have to look at it. So the first thing you've got to do is you've got to be willing. Say willing. The second thing you've got to do is you've got to possess meekness to know God's will. Say meekness. Psalms 25 verse 9 is a good text. It says this, the meek he will guide. So what does meek mean? Meek just basically means you got to have a teachable spirit. You know, the worst thing to, do, the worst thing to have in, your, in, in, a, in a classroom, and I used to teach, um, I've done a little adjunct work at Cleveland State, and you can tell when somebody's not teachable. And so we'd have some students, you know, they think they knew everything, and I said, at least act like you want an A. But the Bible says we ought to be meek and have a teachable spirit. What does that mean? A broken spirit. I think some people pointing at each other. They better stop doing that. I'm going to defend you, Deke. Don't worry about it. 
He said, you got to have a teachable spirit. 